Would you stand to your feet as we prepare to give our God great and wonderful praise? Because he is great Jehovah. Hallelujah. He's great Jehovah, and he deserves our worship. Amen. y'all this is the year where we stop playing with our lives and we're saying god we need you in every way so we're determined we're, we're, we're proclaiming that we are going to grow this year are you with me Amen. Hallelujah. Let's worship. Amen. We know we came today. This is our first Sunday of the year. And we say, God, this year we are chasing after you. But have a chasing spirit in your heart. Anybody else know that if there's anybody we need to be following, we need to be liking and subscribing to our Savior. It's our Lord Almighty. So we say, God, we are chasing after you. No matter what, no matter what we 
see no matter what is going on. God, it's you that we are longing for. As the track plays, we declare that God, we're chasing you and no one else. Anybody else have their heart ready to receive what God is doing and what he is already going to do in our lives. A lot of times we're praying for things and we're looking for things. We say, God, whatever it is for you that you have for us, we are willing to accept. Amen. And we thank you, God, for what you are doing. We thank you for how you are showing yes. up and how you are yes. making a way. Yes. Put your hands together as we declare that, God, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Amen. No matter what I have to do, more and more, I'm chasing after you. No matter what I have to do, here we go. I need you more and more. Can you say that with me? I'm chasing after you. No matter what I have to do, because I need you more and more. Cause I need
greet your neighbor and tell somebody that I'm glad to see you. Go ahead and shake someone's hand. Introduce yourself. It's the first of the year. This year you won't be shy. That's not your portion. This year you won't be timid. God says he gives you a spirit of boldness. Spirit that will step out and do the things you, you don't normally do. In Jesus' name. says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law does he meditate day and night. He is like a tree planted by the streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither, and all that he does he prospers. All that he does, he does not prosper. But it says, the wicked are not so, but are like the chaff of the wind that drives it away. Therefore, the wicked shall not stand in the judgment, nor the sinners in a congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall perish. And so, this morning I like to pray as our new year starts, as we're starting off in our new year. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you so much that your word tells us that a man is blessed when he does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, but when he does not stand in the seat of, of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. So your word tells us that we will be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water when we delight in you. And so, God, for 2024, I pray a blessing over your people here at Lighthouse. I pray for tremendous growth, Lord God. And the type of growth that says that, you know what? We are that tree that is planted by the streams of water. It doesn't matter what time of day. We're constantly nourished because we're in your word and we're doing what you call us to do. And so, God, we pray for 2024 that you would just go before us that you would help us to grow, help us to be the people of God that you called us to be. Help us not to be afraid to be bold and to pro proclaim the truth of the gospel to a dying world. Be with us, O oh God. Order our steps because your word tells us that the steps of the righteous are ordered by you. Go before us now. In the name of Jesus, we pray and give thanks. And for everybody that loves the Lord, say amen. 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 Welcome to 2024. It's the first Sunday of the year, and I know that you have it in your heart that you will be in the sanctuary for the year. Anybody else made that declaration? Anybody else made that declaration? Amen, amen, amen. Last couple of weeks, we've been talking about small groups, and we even had a small group fair in the breezeway last week where you were able to see all the different small groups, and so many of us 
signed up, if you signed up for a small group, look at this. And everybody else, take a look around you. This is what we do. We stay in community. We stay in, in, in fellowship with one another. We recognize that we're not supposed to do this life alone. So later on this afternoon, after service, the booths will be back up there again. If you didn't get a chance to sign up, you can do that there. So many things, so many things that will be taking place in our church this year. Uh, we had a good year last year. Uh, a lot of things that were happening, a lot of lives that were changed. So many people got saved and baptized and our youth ministry doubled and I would dare to say tripled. And so we thank God for what he is doing. Get connected, get plugged in. If you don't know where to do that, download the Church Center app. If you don't know how to do that, in the next building over, in the next building over, in the next building over, someone is there to help you in the front foyer. I know someone's gonna say afterwards, where do I go? How do I find out how to download this app? In the next building over. Someone say, in the next building over. Yeah, there's a welcome center there, and then it'll be chock full of people who wanna help you. And then a breezeway will be chock full of people who want you to be a part of their small group. So don't forget to sign up today. Get connected, get connected. Will you stand to your feet as we continue our worship? We're saying that we want to live a life for the Lord. We want God to come into our 2024 and shake things up, to move his weight around, to show himself big and strong and mighty, that no matter what happens this year, we will always have the peace and comfort of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I pray your peace and I pray your comfort. Anybody came ready to worship? I see about two or three people that are ready to worship Lord today who are excited that God brought you through and that he is continuing to hold you the hand of the lord is strong the hand of the lord is strong he's strong if you don't believe it take a look at yourself you're here sing with me today mighty war great in battle you have overcome yeah my defender no commander you've already
Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Go ahead and clap for the Lord one time. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. She said, that's good enough for pastor. Like, I ain't nothing, huh? No. <laughs> now, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Amen. It's wonderful to be in the house of God. I pray that everybody is, um, how y'all doing on the fast? Amen. All right. Praise God. Amen. I never thought I'd see when, when, when a whole church would be excited about something like a fast. Let, let me say a little bit about the fast. Guys, don't make it a source of contention, all right? Um, now, one thing I do want to say about it is, if you go back and watch the sermon, remember I said this. I fast from the sun up till the sun actually sets, till it's dark. You don't have to do that. You can look at Google. Google will tell you when dawn is, and it'll tell you when dusk is. I said, I wait till it gets dark. You don't have to do that. Amen. Amen, because the tra traditional Jewish fast is from sunup to sundown or from dawn to dusk. Now, if you want to be extra and gung-ho and all that kind of stuff, that's, praise God, do that. Amen. But again, I, I never saw a place where, um, where a church was excited about fasting. Amen. It's, it's, it's wonderful. Amen. It's, it's a blessing. So that tells me that you guys want something more from God. 
Amen. I don't know about you, but I always heard stories and, and my grandmother used to talk about God. He can do all these mighty things and all these great things. And you read it in scripture. And, and for a lot of people, that's just something that they read in the book. That's not real to them. But I know that somebody here in church today that God has done miracles in your life. God has opened doors that nobody else could. God has given you jobs that you didn't qualify for. God gave you a wife that you didn't deserve. Amen. 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 All kind, God can do anything. And that's the thing we sing about how great he is. But is he your God? Amen. And that's the thing, as believers, we want to make sure that we show the world that God is great. And we do that by the life that we live. You know, I've heard it said before that um, some, the Bible that some people will only read is is your life. So we have to make sure that we do what God wants us to do and and, and, and we're focused and we're we're just just living the life that we say. Amen? And don't be telling folks jokes. No, I'm just just kidding. Amen. (laughs) Amen. Just, I, I didn't crawl out under rock. Amen. The preacher, yeah, I, I know about it. Amen. Amen. Everybody does. I mean, how, how can you not? Amen. But it's just a blessing to be in the house of God. Good to see everybody. We want to say a special welcome to all visitors. We're glad you're here. Amen. This is a, a unique time. And, and, and I think in the history of just San Jacinto alone, I believe God is going to do great things in this city. Amen. And when we look around and, and as a church, understand this. We're not in competition with other churches because we live in a society where there's all this competition. Oh, as long as people are getting saved. Now, I'm going to tell you straight up. Now, I am against focus this preaching a false doctrine. I'm going to tell you that straight up because they're presenting something false that's not real. Amen. I mean, like these they got nowadays, these um, these fake burgers they are made out of plants and stuff. That ain't no real burger, man. I mean, they can put smoke flavor on it and, and make the texture right and all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, that's not ground beef. That's ground, I don't know what, plants or something. I don't know. <laughs> but the thing is, is that it's hard to make something fake real. And I really believe that God this year is going to start exposing some of these fake preachers. Pray for it. Amen. We're fasting and praying that God will expose some of these fake people because you know what? What good is it to go to a building and never had a reality? What good is it to sit down and eat a a piece of so-called fake beef and you don't get the protein? What good is it to have a relationship and somebody's not your friend and they're stabbing you in the back? What good is it to have a car that looks good in the driveway and it don't even run? It's no good. And you know what? What good is it to say we have Christianity and there's no power in our life? There's no reality in us. There's no love in our hearts. There's no uh, blessings in our spirit. What good is it? God doesn't want us to be fake. He wants us to be real. So pray that God will expose some of these fake jokers. Because as a believer and as as a true person that's called of God, I hate to see that. People going through the motions and, you know, why have the fake when you can have the real thing? Now, I'm not talking about no jewelry, but again, this ain't, I ain't paying no, you know how much a gold break would the cost? I'm talking about thousands of dollars. I ain't talking about no jewelry. I'm talking about, I'm talking about your life, amen? Or, or like when I was in Korea, they had a bunch of fake shoes. They have fake Jordans and fake, and, you know, and it's good. It's all good when you're just walking around. But once you start playing basketball and the sole come off, you just, oh, man, I hurt my ankle. And be going back, ooh, my, man, my sole came off. <laughs> But the thing is that God doesn't want us to be fake. He wants us to be real. Now, having said that, let me say this about the fast. Don't do it for people to see. You do it because you want to get closer to God, and your fast should be between you and God. Amen? Amen? Again, don't be that, that, um, what we, uh, that sympathy sucker. That's what I call it. People that always want sympathy. Men, you know what I'm talking about. When you're sick and you walk around the house and, and oh, you want your wife to cater to you, amen, because you want some sympathy. I've been there, amen. Come on, take care of me. Come on. But, but, but we, we don't want to do that when we're fasting, when we're doing our, um, our, our devotion and our different things to God. You don't want everybody, look, y'all, I'm reading the Bible. Look, I'm, 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 I'm making sure. And, and, and don't do that, amen. Even with your spouse, because sometimes it's a competition in households. Yeah. Baby, fast today, did you? No, let, let them, that's between them and God. And just like I told one of the groups that, that, that I'm a part of, I said, you know what, if, if we do it and your attitude is bad and not right, God's not going to bless it anyway. So you might as well not even do it. And that's the thing, we want to do things where God can be pleased. 
you know, I, I want to say I'm, I'm just I'm just blessed because this is not the first time that um, actually my children have been on a fast also. You know, I, I, one, my kids can say a lot of things about me. Oh, yeah, I get turned up sometimes. I get upset. Hey, man, I'm real. I'm a, I'm a human being. But they can never say I cursed them out. Hey, Amen. They can never say I lost my temper where I hit their mother. Say, preach you wanted to sometime. Hey, come on, we, hey. <laughs> no, no, I'm just playing. I'm not playing. But the thing is that, you know, you, you have to restrain that. And that's the thing about your flesh. Learn to restrain your flesh. And that's the reason why we're fasting to get control of your flesh. Some of you, this is the first real battle that you had with your flesh. And that thing will wake you up and be like, you want to eat, you want to eat. And everything you see looks like food. You hungry, you smell it, you, you look at it, you, all of these things. It, it, it's a real fight and it's a real battle. But guess what? You can overcome. In the name of the Lord, amen, you can overcome. So make sure that your focus, and, and, and this is what I always say, let your hunger drive you to prayer. When you get hungry, let your hunger make you go in there, open up your word, and get the spiritual food. What did Jesus say? He said, man shall not live by bread alone, amen, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So make sure that you get your word, make sure you get your spiritual um, health right, starting off this new year the right way. Amen. It's a blessing. I appreciate everybody that's a part of it. Amen. And again, pray. Our focus on prayer is that God will make our church healthy. You say, well, preacher, what about growing? When we're healthy, it'll automatically grow. Amen. I remember one time, um, now this is, this is old school, y'all. You, you're probably not going to see people with this no more. Like Some of y'all are old enough. If you're in your 50s, you remember what a high top fade is? I had a high top fade, and um, I messed around and tried to dye it, like Kwame, like, I don't know, some, some of y'all may not even know what I'm talking about, but anyway. So I got, somebody told me you can get bleach or, or peroxide and put it in your hair, and it would dye your hair. And it did. I was walking around good for a little while until I washed it. And all of a sudden, the little streak fell out. <laughs> so, the thing, and, and, and I don't even know what I was talking about. Anyway, yeah. That it was free. That didn't cost you nothing. Amen. <laughs> All right, y'all. It's, it's a blessing to be in the house of God. Appreciate everybody. Again, visitors, I'm, I'm glad you're here. You, you, this is a special time for you to, to just see. Because, you know, a lot of times people see fake. The preacher's some kind of weird joker that's walking up, acting like he can't even talk in English. And, oh, hi, brother. And God goes, go, go. that's not, bro, that's not you. Don't act like that. And a lot of people have never seen a, re a real pastor, a real man of God, this, this real. I'm a real person, man. I walked in there this morning with a toothpick in my I had to take it. I said, oops. <laughs> Terry, I think I was talking to Terry, and I forgot it was in there. But anyway, yeah, I always have something in my mouth, but that's just a, a southern thing, you know. And it keeps me from licking my lips, so that's one of the reasons why I do it. But anyway, yeah, so um, when you see real, it's hard to go back to fake. And that's why as a church, I don't feel like you have to always be convincing people to, to, to stay in a church. People, oh, they're going oh, they, they to get my members. and all. First of all, you ain't my member. This is God's church. Amen? Amen. I always say this. I just work here. I do all kind of junk. You'll see me changing light bulbs. You'll see me taking out trash. You'll see me doing whatever, sweeping the parking lot. Whatever is needed for the house of God. I'm not too proud to mop a floor. I'm not too proud to clean a toilet. I'm not too proud to do any of this. Amen. Because God called me to do his work. No matter what it is. Amen. So the thing is, is that when you see a real, it's hard to go back to something fake when, you, when, when you've had real. So if you're a visitor today, this is what a real church is supposed to be like. Where there's praise and worship, amen, where you don't have to get suited and booted. I just wore this today because, again, I have to look a certain way, but, you know, or I'm going to get talked about, but that's all right. So, but, but, hey, the thing is, is that, you know, it's not about that. Amen? It's not about what you wear. And all of you folks came from holiness churches. Y'all know what a holiness church is? I grew up in a holiness. Not, no, I got saved in a holiness church. And it's contrary to what scripture says, to be honest with you. Um, they had customs back then. They had ways they did things back then. And um, you, can, you can be saved and, and wear pants as a lady. Amen? You can wear makeup as a lady. That's not sinful. Well, Jezebel did it. 
Jezebel probably wore drawers too, but does that mean you? Come on now. I don't know why people come with this crazy junk. It's just religion. I, I, are you tired of religion? Hey Amen. I'm tired of religion. I want a reality in God. When people are tired of the garbage. They, they're tired of the fake. They're tired of the phony. You can have a real relationship with the creator of the universe where you can talk to him. It doesn't have to be through somebody. I always tell you guys, I don't have no special magical powers. But I do have a prayer life and I do walk with the Lord. And you should too. Amen. It's not just just um, specially for a certain amount of people and certain groups of people. You can actually have a relationship with God and you're close to God as you want to be. Because he said, draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. Amen. All right. So we're going back to James chapter five. We're going to uh, wrap this up before we start our our um, church wide study. Hey, man, I'm always blessed by that, where the whole church, all the small groups and everybody that's a part of Lighthouse, when we're doing certain things, we're going to do it all together. There's going to be a sermon series on it. It's called, like, The Campaign. We, we do this once a year, well, a couple times a year, and um, so where we can be on one accord, because that's God's desire. Amen? That we all be on one accord. And before I even continue, let me say, if, if you are serious, again, about discipleship, I would like to meet with you guys after church for about... 15 to 20 minutes. So everybody who signed up to be a, a part of the discipleship group, amen? If you did, raise your hand so I can just see you. Amen. So I, I want to see you guys for uh, like 15 minutes after, after service so we can talk about some things. You had, your, um, you had your holidays, you had your break, now it's time to get busy. Amen? So it, it's, it's going to be good, though. It's going to be good. All right, so going back to James chapter 5. Before we start, let's pray. All right now, we just thank you. God, you're truly great. God, we've gathered together in this place to honor you and worship your name. God, you've done so much for us. God, and as a congregation today, as those who are here that are fasting, God, we're, we're doing what your word says. And God, in doing so, we expect your blessing. Upon this new year, God, as we start this year off, God, in fasting and in prayer, we pray that you strengthen us as a church. We pray that you strengthen us as individuals. We pray that the power of your spirit is upon us, that we can be witnesses, God, every, everywhere we go, not just in what we say, but through the way that we live. <clears throat> Empower us, God, as a mighty force to reach this community. For your name's sake. God, we honor you and we praise you in Jesus' name. <clears throat> amen. Amen. All right, praise God. Going back to James chapter 5. Now, a little bit before we start this actual chapter, <clears throat> I'm just going to go through a few verses today and then we'll, we'll finish it up later. Uh oh. Now, here again, the thing about the book of James, remember who James was. James was the, the half brother of Jesus. You say, preach, I didn't think Jesus had brothers and sisters. Yes, he did. Read the Bible. That's, again, religious junk that's not even reality. It in, is in right in Scripture. Jesus had brothers and he had sisters also. Again, they were half because Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Amen. You have to believe that just to be saved. Amen. But um, Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and, and the other ones were conceived by, by and Joseph. So knowing Scripture, knowing that, just making sure that we, we were right the, theologically. Amen. But, and when we see this and when we, we look at the, the scriptures, and we look at um, James chapter five, James was saying a whole lot of different things. Th this can be called the modern day Proverbs. Again, going back to it for some of the people who weren't here. Um, we've already went through the first four chapters. We're, we're starting chapter five. But now he's getting ready to deal with um, with money. Now, there's a few subjects that I try to preach on a couple of times a year. Now, one is fasting. Amen. I, I try to preach on fasting at least twice a year. Another one is um, <clears throat> about giving and, and, and finances. Now, do y'all know what Forbes magazine is? It's the magazine that talks about wealth and riches, and they have the, the, the top richest people in the world. They talk about um, finances. I think in, it was 2012 when Forbes wrote about the Bible. 
and it said that the Bible is the single best financial literature that you can read on planet Earth. Forbes magazine said this. Now, make no mistake about it, rich people understand that they need to give. You talk to anybody that's rich. Now, they may not give it to a church. They may not give it to you, amen? <laughs> but they give it to somebody. Either St. Jude's or, or um, some kind of boys and girls club or, 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 or you know, missions to Africa or, or, or getting food to the hungry. They, they find some kind of way to give. You know, understanding something about the Bible, it doesn't matter if you're saved or not saved. There are certain principles in the Bible that work no matter who you are because God set these things up. Just like the world and the earth turns on its axis and it rotates and, and all of these different things and there's a, a, a sun up and sun down and all of these things and time and seasons. God put all of these things in perpetual motion, just like gravity, amen. And people always say certain things like, I don't believe that. You can believe what you want to believe, but the reality is gravity is a real force. And if you jump on top of this roof, get on this roof and jump off, whether you believe it or not, your behind's going to hit the ground. And that's the thing about these certain principles in Scripture. Whether you believe it or not, it's still real. The other day I heard something about, um, somebody was talking about Dwayne Johnson. He went to an In-N-Out burger or something like that. And, and, I, and I immediately began to think about In-N-Out. Do you know the people that own that are Christians? Do you know Ness or Hershey's Candy? You know they started off their business with the model and the principle that 10% of everything we get, we're going to give to a church. Do you know that? Yeah. Heinz Ketchup is another one. There's all of these different um, institutions that no matter where you go, you find, and I hate it, especially when you fast, and amen? <laughs> you, go to that can, you go to that thing up, up to the checkout, and then all of a sudden there's all this candy. That's for a reason, amen. All this candy, and, and you go in and out, there's not a time when you go by in and out that that lie's not wrapped around the corner, amen. Because, you know, and, and I dare you to do this, the next time you go there, lift up the cup and look under it. There's a scripture there, amen. The thing is that when you put God, that's the thing, Christians, you need to understand this. Put God first. Amen. Praise God. That, that's something that you can clap for. Amen. <laughs> Learn how to put God first in your life. Learn how to put God first in your marriage. Learn how to put God first in your finances. If you're having problems with your children, learn how to pray over their life and fast for them and say, God, they may be wayward. They may not be where they need to be and believe it. In faith, I believe, God, that everything's going to be all right because my faith, trust, and hope is not in man. It's in you. I dare you to start taking some of your problems to God. Stop calling your mama. Your mama don't have the answers to everything. Now, don't get me wrong. They have some answers. Amen. They can tell you how to make them black eyed peas. Amen. They can, they can tell you how to moisturize your skin. They, now, they, don't get me wrong. But God is God. There's no person on earth that we should put before God. Now, you think about it as a parent or as somebody that's over a business or anything. How do you feel when you're in charge and they go, somebody goes to somebody else for advice? How do you think God feels about that? You call him Lord. And Jesus said, you may call me Lord, but guess what? Do you do the things that I say? We stand in the presence of him and Otis and we lift up our hands and we cry out his name and great are you, Lord. But when there's a problem, is he still great? Guys, I'm not just talking a bunch of junk. I live this and have been faithfully by. And I'm not trying to brag or boast, but I'm telling you, it's possible to live for God. An old sinner from Mobile, Alabama that, that drank under the table and, and did all these things and slept around and didn't uh, just gank people. Well, I don't know what gank. <laughs> that means swindle people. <laughs> Take money and do all these underhanded things. If God can save me, he can save anybody. And I'm not saying I'm the worst person that ever walked on earth, but hey, God can save anybody. So when Forbes wrote that, they were trying to get people to understand something, that, that God's word is true. 
Fasting is a subject that we preach on at least twice a year. The next subject is giving or about finances. Do you know throughout the whole Bible, money or the use of money, how to be a good steward, how to take care of things, giving, all that kind of stuff. You know that's the single most talked about um, subject in the Bible? More than faith? More than prayer? More than heaven? More about relationships? So if it's that important, don't you think you need to know how to use it? Now, James here was talking about money and he was talking about finances. Now, he talked to Christians before. I think it was in chapter 2. In the assembly of the saints in his day, there were rich Christians. Now, that brings up the question, uh, is it wrong or is it sinful for a Christian to be rich? No, it's not. There were many rich people in the Bible. Abraham was rich. David was rich. Solomon was rich. Job was rich. There were even people that followed Christ that were rich. They owned a lot of land, and it may not be the riches like we think today, but, but they owned a lot of land or cattle or different things. Wealth was measured differently in the days of Christ. But when you look at this and you understand that in chapter 2, he was speaking to the rich Christians that were a part of their assembly. Now he's talking to um, people who are not saved. So people who are, and he's not really just talking to them, so to speak, because guess what? A, a person not saved, they're not going to pick up the Bible and read it. And even saying that, let me, this is something just dropped in my spirit. I'm, I'm just going to share it with you. Stop trying to tell unbelievers about the things of God. Because first of all, they don't understand it. They probably think you crazy. Amen? Live the life before them. Don't try to cram the Bible down your children's throat. Live the life before them. Stop trying to tell everybody, and, and, all, and there's nothing wrong with wearing shirts with Jesus loves you and, and bumper stickers on your car and all that's cool, but don't be cutting folks off in traffic and telling them that they're number one <laughs> with Jesus on the back of your car. But come on, I'm just because you're, you're, you're being a bad representation of what a, just take it off. I took it off my car. Because I know I drive crazy. My wife said, I don't like driving with you because you'd be all over. She'd be holding on for dear life. But I drove. I was, I'm a prof, was a professional driver. I drove trucks for 22 years. Amen. So I, I can drive. I can get. It's the other folks that I'm worried about. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So the, the thing is that, and I'm not trying to say I'm all that because things happen, but, but you, um, but when you, but when you're a representative of Christ, it should be a way of life. In everything you do, in all manners of conversation, Brother Cromwell, it just bothers me so much that sometimes people are, are one way in church and another way outside of church. These things, my brother, they are not so to be, <laughs> as the word says. So be the same. Don't you? I don't know about y'all, but I hate fake people. Man, don't be fake. Be real. And if you struggle with something, hey, hey, I struggle with that. I know some of y'all are probably struggling on the fast. Hey, it's, it's nothing wrong with saying that you struggle. You hungry, you hungry. I get it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> now, oh, again, that brings me to uh, Now, every, somebody was, a couple of people asked me, so if, since we're fasting, is it okay to take communion? Absolutely. I'm going to tell you, it's probably going to make you hungry. Because once you put some food in your system, your, your system is expecting more. But that's okay. Be, just go get some black coffee. It'll be fellowship over there. So go, go get some after service. So it ain't going to be no donuts and stuff. So it, you out of luck, so if you're looking for that, there ain't going to be none. You can just look at them. Eh? <laughs> but, but, but taking communion is, is a part of what we do as believers. Amen. Amen. And I will say this. If, if you're not serious about serving God, don't, please don't take this. It's, it's, it's something that, that God frowns on. Amen. But if you are, you should. Amen. It's a blessed time as believers to take communion. All right, so let's go on, go on back to the scripture. So James talking to these Christians, not Christian, but these unbelievers who are wealthy. And basically what he's trying to do is warn us 
about the, um, the things about riches. Because people always think that money going to change everything. There's, there's stories on, on um, I've seen them on the different TV shows and on the internet where, where people who have won the lottery and it literally destroyed their life. Think your wife love you, get some money, man, be trying to kill you. <laughs> Putting cyanide in your grits, amen. <laughs> the thing is, is that, you know, people think that money's going to cure everything. Man, if I was just rich, all my problems would go away. No, they wouldn't. Because one thing about money is money magnifies what's already in you. If you're a good person and you're generous and you give, if you get some money, you probably just going to give it all away. But the thing that I love about that is God said, if you give, it'll come back to you. Amen. Press down, shake it together and run it over. How come it is that the people that are the most generous succeed the most in life? I hear so many stories about Shaquille O'Neal, about how he would just walk into a place and just buy things and just give people stuff. That man is blessed. And he'll always have. I remember there's a slogan we used to say at 295. I, I give because I have. I have because I give. And because of this, I'm never without. Amen. God will make sure you, you got, got, a, got, got something to eat. It may not be what you want. It may be some oatmeal. But at least, at least you got something to eat. Amen. And this fast is a blessing, too, because some of y'all can save some grocery money. <laughs> Amen. And I've heard a couple of people talking about this. They say, man, I, I, I went and I was, at the end of the day, I was raving hungry. And I said, I got to, I laid all this food out. And I ate a little bit and was like, I'm full. <laughs> Amen. Now, some of y'all may lose some pounds. Pray God, if you want to do that. Amen. But, but, but it's good. It's good for you. All right, going back to um, James chapter 5. He said, preach, you keep jumping off something. That's all right. It's only six, six verses, y'all, so we. You say you stalling? No. <laughs> Let me give y'all a secret, amen, about, about ministry, about pastors. When a preacher gets up and say, you know what, y'all, I, today I'm not going to be before you long. His behind ain't got nothing to preach. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you. So when you hear that in service, <laughs> they're going to be mad at me. That's how I come on with it. Michael, help me. Amen. <laughs> All right. All right. Praise God. All right. So James chapter 5, verse 1. Come now, you rich. Weep and howl for your miseries which are coming upon you. Judgment. Weep and howl. That sounds like pain. My, um... My grandmother used to tell me about her mother. Her mother was the, um, she was the daughter of a slave. People be acting like, oh man, slavery was a thousand years ago. No, it wasn't. My grandmother knew her grandma, and she, my grandmother's grandmother was a slave. My grandmother was 102 when she died, she's gone. But she remembers when her mother was so stricken with arthritis that she was bedridden. And she said, one of the only memories that I have that was so strong about her is all night long, you could just hear her crying and moaning. And she was in so much pain. And they don't have the stuff that we have nowadays. Nowadays, you got Percocet and, and, and all this kind of junk you take. They got some stuff now that a boy you take. And I'm going to tell you something. Ibuprofen is a blessing. I know. <laughs> Because I, I never took the stuff. I always try to tough it out. Man, y'all know what I'm talking about? I ain't taking no medicine. I'm going to tough it out. One day, man, my back was hurting so bad. And I, said, and I was telling my wife about it. She was like, well, why don't you just take some? I said, I don't like taking She said, honey, just take it. Man, I took that stuff. Boy, I was like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, <laughs> it's dangerous, though. Because, and, and, that, and you know what, y'all? That's how people get hooked on drugs. When you find something that takes away the pain, when you find, and you'll always take it. And, they, and the stuff is not good to take, so just, just use moderation and pray about it. But I'm going to tell you something, that junk is a blessing, boy. I, I, <laughs> I took it, man, and it took my back pain away. I was, man, it was a blessing. But, um, but, but when you study scripture, and he was talking about weeping and howling for the misery that's coming upon you. Now, you wouldn't think that somebody rich would have misery. 
You wouldn't think that they would have pain. You don't think, but I'm going to tell you, some of the most miserable people are some of the wealthiest people. They can't trust anybody. Everybody's out to get their money. Whenever they have a new relationship, they think the person's out to get them. They ride in the, in the, in, 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 in the car looking in the rearview mirror. They're going to try to hit me just to, to get my car. I mean, all of these things. There's no peace. But to live in this world with no peace and then to die and go to a place that's absent from the presence of God, it's worse. Now, it don't matter what you believe, because I always hear people, oh, I don't believe in hell. I don't believe in God. It's too merciful to send people there. And he is. But people choose to go there. And again, it doesn't it doesn't have to be fire. It doesn't have to be smoke. It doesn't have to be any of these things. If you were locked in a room by yourself for all eternity, that would be enough. But understand what hell really is. I think people just don't explain what it is. What hell is, is because because of sin, we are separated from God. Amen? So you have to know the whole picture. You have to know the whole um, reason for the atonement. The atonement and the reason that Jesus Christ came back to earth was to give us access back to the Father and to, to, to complete that relationship, the relationship had, that had been severed by sin. It was to bring us back together so we could have a relationship with God so when we die and leave from this world to the next that we can go in God's presence and we can have that eternal relationship with him. Now, if you don't make that connection on earth to have that relationship back to God, then you're going to die and you're still going to be separated from his presence. That's what hell is. Now, understand on earth, there's a lot of things that we experience that are good. And that's not because of mankind. That's because God is good. Amen. We experience sunshine because of God's goodness. We experience the wind on our face and our bodies because of goodness. When we eat something good, we can experience the taste and love it and all of these different things. All of these things are because of God's goodness. Flowers that you see. You ever walked outside and say, man, this is why I live in California. It's expensive as I don't know what, but this is why. This is why I live again. It's beautiful. The weather is beautiful. All of those things are the result of God's goodness. So understand what hell is. Hell is separation eternally from God. And then you'll be a spirit so you won't be able to die. And because you're, you died in a sinful state, you are not reunited with God, so you're separated from him for eternity. So guess what? In hell, there is no sunshine. In hell, there is no breeze. In hell, there is no water. In hell, and I know they talk about the, the different things, and it's going to be a party in hell. Oh, no, it's not going to be a party in hell. The only thing that's going to happen in hell is a prayer meeting. They're going to be praying, God, give me one more chance. But guess what? You had your chance on earth. God, to re- bring it back to your remembrance. Remember when you sat in Light Out Christian Church on this day in January, and the preacher talked about hell. He talked about separation from God but you sat there and you looked and you felt like it wasn't for you salvation is what reunites us with God prayer is what reunites us with God repenting of your sins and yes you do have some some people think they are good I'm good I'm not like him I don't murder people that's what you always hear I don't murder folks but you hate people And I'll tell you something about hate. If you're prejudiced, you're not on your way to heaven. You need to find a way to pray it out of your life. People ain't did nothing to you. And somehow, um, Pastor Alex, black people feel like that doesn't apply to them. I'm just going to be honest. I heard a comedian talk about it, so I ain't trying to steal his joke, y'all. <laughs> I heard a comedian talking about it, and he was just saying that, that black people are some of the most racist people you ever meet. He said, but the problem is our racism just don't have no power. <laughs> now, that's what he said. I didn't say it, so y'all looking at him crazy. But anyway, yeah. But the thing is that you feel like because you're black, you can't be racist. Yes, you can. 
and you'll die and lose your soul thinking that you're okay. Oh, it's always them white people. They always do that. Oh, it's always the Mexican folks. They always do this to me. <laughs> when I lived in Mobile, there wasn't no Mexican folks that stole my rims. I know it was a brother that did it. Amen? <laughs> I'm just kidding, y'all. Hey, sometimes you just got to be real. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but anyway. So racism is a sin. To be prejudiced is wrong. If you're in a position of authority and you qualify and you interview people for jobs, don't hire somebody just because they're black. That's not right. It's not right either way. The good old boy system is wrong. That's a sinful system. He said, weep and howl for your miseries that are coming upon you. He said, your ridges have rotten and your garments have become moth-eaten. You know what? I don't care what you amass in this life. When your spirit and soul leave your body, you're going to leave it right here on planet Earth. Some of your most precious possessions. I see my little, my little, I love my little car, man. But the thing about it is that when I die, I'm going to leave it. And good riddance, too, because I'll be, I'll be in the presence of the Lord. And having said that, make sure you get your house in order before you pass away. Because some people act like it ain't going to happen. Oh, you're going to die. <laughs> oh, I'm going to die. Amen? So get your house in order. Make sure your children are not cut out of their inheritance. Some of the biggest fights that happen, and some of y'all know what I'm talking about, is when somebody passes away, where somebody felt like, you 89 years old, brother, you, get it in order. You're not going to live forever. Get it in order. Get things in order. Let them know what's happening. Go to a court. Go to a, get an a, a, a attorney and draw out the paperwork. Do it right. Don't let them have to figure out what's what when you're gone. What do you think that's going to create? Now, I don't know who that's for, but that's for somebody. So they will have to fight when you're gone. Alleviate that stress. Alleviate that that issue. Alleviate the the strife and just make sure everything and make it plain. Amen? Amen. You know your children. Well, I don't like so-and-so because they didn't. And I get it. You do. You do what you want to do with your stuff. If you want to leave it to a dog, that's fine. But in reality, as a Christian, now I'm not t- if you're a sinner and you ain't saved and whatever, you do what you want. But if you're a Christian, the Bible says that a good man or woman leaves an inheritance to their, chil- their, their children's children. So how can you do that and you broke? The thing is, we should be striving to be the best we can for the future. And even though if you don't leave them a dime, if you give them a reality in God, come on now, if you teach them about Jesus Christ, if you sit down and you think these little children don't be paying attention, if you sit them down and you open, go get you an illustrated Bible. I remember it just like it was yesterday when I was a little kid and my grandmother had a Bible with pictures in it and she opened up that Bible. It's so vivid in my imagination. Coco, I never forgot it. And she showed me this picture and that was Jesus standing there with a bunch of people and he was petting a lion. And I said, Grandma, we'll be able to pet lions in heaven? I said, oh, I want to go there. So you think these children ain't paying attention? They're paying attention. Teach them the word of God now. Because guess what? Evil days are coming. Guess what? Heartache is coming. Relational problems are coming. All of these things are coming. But guess what? If their hope is in God, the best thing you can give them is a relationship with the Lord. See, it's something about saying it. But if you're not living it, they may think that you're phony. He said, your riches have rotted and your garments have become moth-eaten. You're going to leave all of the junk behind. 
and the people that are greedy and hoarders. You know what I'm talking about. When we start talking about the offering in church, you get mad and, oh, here they go, talking about money. <laughs> How do you think lights stay on? Amen. 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 I thank God for our leadership staff. You guys, you guys should really appreciate the pastor. I mean, I'm not even talking about me, the pastoral leadership. You, you appreciate these brothers and sisters because they work for God. Amen. I want to give them applause myself because they work for God and they're not standing there with their hand out talking about how much the church is going to pay me. And I've said it before, I got an issue with musicians. I got, I, I'm just going to tell you. So when they come in here, I'm, I'm looking at you crazy. Why in the world you think that a talent that God gave you, now I get it, if the church has got it, now don't get me wrong, please, don't, but let me tell y'all something, we ain't got it like that. <laughs> All right? That it's things that you see, it's because people gave, amen? I definitely ain't got it like that, amen? But I give to God's program, I pay my tithe just like everybody else, amen? And if you don't believe me, ask Sister Mayberry. Anyway, you say, who's Sister Mayberry? And you'll find out, anyway. But yeah, these TVs and all this stuff happened, that's because people gave. But I appreciate these brothers and sisters. They work for the program of God, and they're not looking for, for money for it. But musicians, they feel like because they have a gift and a talent, you know, God can strip that junk from you. All it takes is one stroke. Come on, let's, let's be real about it. And you walk around acting like you all that, and in air, oh, they, they need to pay me. God gave you the talent. You can't give it in his house? And some of y'all can sing. What did he take your voice from you? He can do it. Now, don't, God can do it. Don't play with God. That's one of the things I learned as a kid. Don't play with God. Amen. It's a trip. The one that gave you everything. But anyway, whatever. Your riches are moth-eaten. Your gold and your silver have rusted, and their rust will be a witness against you and will consume your flesh like fire. It's the last days, and you have stored up your treasure. That goes, that's going to come a time when, 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 when your money can't save you. And I think about some of these celebrities. They've done their dirt. They've messed over people. They've raped women and, 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 and they've pillaged and, they, and, and they've, they've let, took these people's talent and, and gave them pennies and stuff like that. You think God's not watching that? You may say, well, preacher's karma. First of all, who that? <laughs> I'm going to tell you what the scriptures say. Whatever. He's, no, he didn't, even, he didn't even start saying that. He said, be not deceived. So in common vernacular, don't let nobody lie to you. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. So again, there's a system that God set up. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. So guess what? Be good to people because one day you may reap it. Amen? Do the right thing to people because one day you may reap it. Stop trying to jack everybody because one day you're going to reap it. Do what's right because one day you're going to reap it. Do right by people. Don't be deceived. Don't be tricked. The enemy will trick you. And he tricks people and tells them, well, nobody gave you nothing. Nobody helped you. It's all the stuff the devil taught. It's about you. You're the one. You're the reason why you're in your position. And then that pride puffs up. God hates pride. If you're proud and arrogant, God won't touch you with a 10 foot pole. He resists the proud. Amen? That's why as a believer, be humble. Amen? And that's one of the things I love about fasting. Fasting humbles you because you can eat, but you say, you know what? For spiritual purposes, I'm not going to eat. I'm going to use this time to get closer to God. It said God gives grace to the humble. Amen? But he resists the proud. Your flesh, he says, is going to be a witness against you. You stored up these treasures in the last days. He said, behold, 
the pay of your laborers who have mowed your fields and which have, withheld, have been withheld by you cries out against you. And the outcry of those who have did the harvesting has reached the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. And so in essence, what is actually happening is, is that the rich people, they don't you hate when you do something and you you um you you do a, do some work and the people don't want to pay you? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And and people will do that. Oh, I ain't got it. Well, why did you have me do the work? Amen. It's not right to do that. So in other words, these rich people were going around and they were doing things and and all of these things were happening and and and, and they were not paying these people. That's how they accumulated their wealth. And some of you know exactly what I'm getting ready to say. All money ain't good money. If you got it by jacking people and doing the wrong thing and stuff like that, that's going to be a witness against you. And it don't matter what you think and what you believe. Every single person in this building is going to stand before God. Christians alike. Because sometimes people think it's just for, oh, it's just the judgment for, no, that's a, that's a, a certain Judgment for believers is called the judgment seat of Christ. Believers are going to be judged too. And that's what's going to, do, that's what's going to determine your rewards in heaven. Amen? So when you get all your rewards here on earth, then you're probably going to go to heaven and they ain't going to have none. Now, don't, don't, get this, don't get this twisted, all right? Because a lot of times people have, have a wrong concept of this. Preachers are not going to have some great reward in heaven. God is going to reward you according to what he's called you to do for him. God is just. Amen. So if he called you to be a minister and you're a jacked up minister and you're sorry and you're trying to mess over people and, and you don't want to study the word and you don't pray and you don't. Guess what? You're going to get a sorry reward. If you're a faithful brother or sister in church and, and you're saved and, and you know you, you run a small group and you want to do that to the best of your ability, you study and you, you try to do right by people, and your reward is going to be great in heaven. So it's not according to what he's called you to do. It's according to how you did what he called you to do. And God is going to be asking about some of your gifts and talents. Hey, I gave you the ability to do this and you didn't use it for my kingdom. What's the problem? You use it for your own selfish gain. Amen. Well, preacher, I don't believe that. Believe what you want. But one day you're going to stand before me, then you'll see. <laughs> the greatest day of remorse is going to be when people stand before God and they're going to wonder, what if I would have done this? What would be if I would have had that? But you can't go back. That's the rich man and Lazarus. And people always say, oh, that's just a metaphor. No. How you know in Scripture? Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you how you know Jesus was talking about parables and when he was talking about real people. He said there was a certain man. That's not a parable. He's talking about somebody that lived. And that was thousands of years ago. And he's still begging for water. It just makes sense to serve God. I'm sorry. <laughs> I little 80, 90 years we live here, man, it just makes sense to serve God. You have lived luxuriously on the earth and have lived a life of wanton pleasure. You have fattened your hearts in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and put to death the righteous man. He does not resist you. You know, rich people think they were stupid. Then people go to a building every week and worship a being that they can't see. They worship somebody that wrote a book that was written thousands of years ago. They're so stupid. That's what they believe about Christians. But guess what? On their deathbed, things change. When death is staring them right in the face, and they're laying down, and, 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 and your money can't help you. 
Your Rolls Royce may be in the parking lot, but you can no longer drive it because your foot is so atrophied because of the sickness that you have. When you're hungry, but you have the means to buy anything you can, but you put the food in your mouth and the cancer has eaten your vocal cords such a point of so, of so dead, you can't even taste the food. And then they start wondering, I wonder if that God is real. But the thing that I love about God, oh, hallelujah, God is so merciful that even in that time, amen, praise God. And that's why everybody sitting in this building today, you have no excuse because God has stretched out his hand, because God has given you a lifeline, because God has led you to this place, and you think it's by accident. I just came because somebody invited me. No, it's by divine appointment. God wants you in this building. God wants you to hear this message. Why? Because the evil days are coming, and guess what? If you don't have the blood over the doorpost, nobody's going to be saved. Have you ever read the book of Revelation? Do you know what's coming up on this planet? Do you know what's it's going to be so hot and people aren't going to be able to stay outside? There's going to be 100-pound boulders falling from the sky. What are you going to do then? There's going to be lava. There's going to be earthquakes so strong that the whole cities are going to be level. There's going to be tidal waves. There's going to be earthquakes. And most of all, there's some demons that are so wicked. God has got them in chains. And he said in the last days, I'm going to send the angel down there to unlock the chains. And these devils are going to be able to have free reign on planet Earth. And they're going to kill one third of everything. What are you going to do then? Preacher, are you scared? No, because my Redeemer is mighty. Amen. If God is for us, who can be against us? Guys, I don't even know how this message turned into this. But somebody better give their life to God before it's eternally too late. And you know what, y'all? People don't preach like this no more. They want to preach you happy and tell you, oh, Jesus is love. He was some kind of was weak dude that walked around. Oh, he, oh, he, I love you. Uh, no. The Jesus that was in the Bible, he walked around with power. He knew who he was. Amen. If you're a Christian, you know who you are. Amen. If you're a Christian, you should be the light. Amen. That's not just a slogan, because guess what? Before this church was even founded, I prayed and said, God, give me a a, a title for the church or what shall we call the church? And it immediately came to my heart, Lighthouse, because you're supposed to be a light. When you walk into a place, the demons are supposed to flee. When you walk into a place as a believer, things are supposed to change. If they don't, what's wrong with your salvation? Jesus didn't walk around like some punk. He had power. When he went places, people followed him. Come on now. When he started opening his mouth, everybody shut up. Amen. So don't get it twisted. They were saying they were going to kill him. He said, you can only kill me if God allow you. And he walked right through the midst of him and ain't a joke to think about touching him. Amen. You got to read your Bible. And guess what? He said, I'm coming back. He said, and when I come back, the same place that he left, he said his foot is going to touch the earth. And it said all the saints are coming back with him. And this kingdom is going to be established on earth. Guess what? You're not going to have a choice of whether to go to church then. Amen. He's going to subdue the earth with power. And we're going to be, I'm going to be right there. Get him, Lord. (laughs) Amen. I wonder what they believe in. Money. Is money your God? Do you sell God out to make 15 extra dollars in overtime? I'm not trying to guilt trip you. You do what you want. 
let the Holy Spirit be. I'm not the Holy Spirit, y'all. You let him be your guide. Because sometimes people take everything that the person says behind a pulpit is like it's, it's some, some divine intervention from God. You have to let God guide your life. Because there's certain things that you can do and God allows you to do, but you have to be the master over your own self. And the Holy Spirit will tell you when you've gone too far. I know we just got finished the holiday season. I know I love some eggnog. Not the plain one either. Put a little... Put a little <laughs> but you know when enough is enough. And don't look at me like that. I know they've told you your whole life it was a sin to drink. Let me open the Bible and show you something. They lied to you. <laughs> it's crazy. Jesus said, no what? The truth. And he said the truth. He didn't say will set you free because people, Sister Anna, they always misquote that. He said the truth will make you free. In other words, once you know what the truth is, you have no choice. The chains are broken. The shackles are gone. I know the truth from a lie. Man, my watch falling off and all kind of junk. Amen. But money and power, would you rather have money in this world or power in a world to come? Amen. Let's pray. Father, right now, we just thank you for your word. God, your word is powerful. It's not me, God. It's your word. I pray, God, we talked about a bunch of different things. Salvation, heaven, being in the kingdom. God, I wish you could show the people in this building a glimpse of the things that you've prepared for those that love you, God. It's so great. We can't even imagine. Colors that we've never seen. Streets that are paved with pure gold. The angels standing around your throne. Peace and joy forever. Heaven is in my view. God, give someone else the same vision. Father, we love you. We honor you. I pray if there's somebody who doesn't know you, God, that they would ask you to allow them to be born again. Not just to make a religious declaration to change their life, but that you can spiritually reach down into their heart and make them a new creature. God, you did for me, God. You're no respect of person. You said if they ask, that you would in no wise cast them out. Save a soul today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. It's a good word. Here's um, a principle that we need to, to keep in mind that God does things on purpose. When the gospel goes forward, it's meant to break up the fallow ground of our hearts. And so I know that there are some that heard the word and said, God, that's me. That's me. I need to be different. I hear you, Lord. My heart needs to be changed by your power. And so I'm going to ask you to just think for a moment. We're getting ready to take communion here in a second. But before we take communion and stuff like that, we, we take this time very, very seriously. Because communion is for believers. It just is. And so if you sense that God is dealing with you about your salvation and you need to be right with God today, I'm going to ask that, that you ask for help before today is out. Come and talk to one of us pastors here, Pastor Lowe, Pastor Ivy, uh, Pastor Ace, any one of us. Come and see us directly following service so you can find out what your next step is. And um, also, as we're preparing to take communion, if you do not have your communion cup and you would like to, to take communion today, just wave really quick and we'll go ahead and get you a, a communion cup. I just want to let you know this. The Word of God tells us um, this is 
this is a time for believers. It le legitimately is a time for believers. So hear the word of the Lord in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 27. He says, Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and the blood of the Lord. Let a person therefore examine himself then, and so then eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many of you are weak and ill, and some have even died. But if you, if you judge ourselves truly, if we judge ourselves truly, we would not be judged with the rest of the world. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that, so that the Lord, excuse me, so, so that we may not be condemned along with the world. We're going to take a few moments of just reflection. And in this time of reflection, we spend time and we, we think about what our responsibility is in communion. We think about what Christ has done for us, what he's done in us, and why he has changed us. And then we also get it right with those that we need to get it right with. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you are fighting on your way to church this morning. This is a great opportunity for you to ask for forgiveness. This is a great opportunity to lay yourselves bare before the Lord. Because at the end of the day, Christ has forgiven us. And if he's forgiven us, we ought to forgive one another. Amen. All right, so we're going to take just a few moments where we have a time of reflection, make our confession to the Lord, and then we'll come back together and we'll partake together. Supper. It is such a privilege and an honor for the people of God to be able to partake in the Lord's Supper. It's a time where we get to think about what was actually done for us and say, God, yes, I agree with you, Lord. Your blood is for me, your body is broken for me. And so we'll partake. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 says, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus also the same night that he was betrayed took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me so Jesus took the bread and he broke it and as he sat with his disciples and he says look here I'm about to give 
my body as a ransom for you. I'm going to take a beating that you deserve because I'm going to reconcile you. He says, as often as you get together, when you guys come together on one accord as a church, as the people of God, he said, do this remembering what I did for you. Let's remember that Christ is king and that his body was broken for us. Let's partake together. Verse 25 says, in the same way, also he took the cup after supper. He said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat the bread and drink of the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. And so likewise, he took that cup. And he said, this is the insurance. This is your insurance that you will be saved because of what I am doing for you. So when you put your faith in Christ, when you say, God, you are my king, I trust in you. The finished work of Christ, the broken body and the shed blood is then applied to your account. And you are made right with God and he says remember that my blood seals you before the father let's partake together father we thank you we bless you we honor you we turn to you Lord because there's nobody like you Lord God we've searched the world and we've looked for salvation and all kinds of different things but God, we know beyond the shadow of a doubt, there is nobody like Jesus. There's nobody able to quicken the dead. There's nobody that is able to, to reach down and, and, and take the broken and undone and say, now you've been made righteous except that of the blood of the lamb. And so God, we bless your name today. We say hooray to Jesus. We say thank you for, for looking at, after a wretched man like me. Because you didn't have to do it. You could have left me in my mess. You could have left me on the streets. You could have left me in my drugs, Lord God. But you didn't leave that for me. You called us out of this mess. And you called us into a wonderful, close relationship with you. And we bless you for it. This is not a somber moment, but it's a celebratory moment saying that Christ is king and you, we know you have dominion over the world. We can look at the world and say that the world will be changed because of what Jesus has done. We will not be the same because of what you've done, Lord. 2024 will not be like 2023. It'll be so much better because I'm walking closer with you. I will not stay in the same spot of being a wreck. But the word of God will change me. Because I have new life. And new life encompasses new things, new experiences with you. I get to walk in newness of life. And so we bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Put your hands together for Jesus this morning. We're going to take a few minutes really quick. We have a few video announcements. So if you would direct your attention to the monitors. Thank you for joining us for today's service. We'll be a few minutes for our announcements. You've asked for it, you prayed for it, now the Wednesday night Bible study is a reality. We are going to start this Wednesday night with a Bible study from 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock. 
This will be a blessed forum. It'll be a, something that you can grab, that you can sink your teeth into. The word is going to be powerful. There's going to be a panel of different pastors giving this study. So attend this study. If you work on the weekends, God has made a way for you to be still engaged, still involved, and be active in the church. So come to Bible study this Wednesday at 6. We have a challenge for you. I love a good challenge. Everybody loves a good challenge. But this challenge is specifically for our small groups. Small groups, every week we're gonna have a challenge for you and your small groups. Let's see who let's see who's serious here. So this week our challenge is write it down, get ready, check your neighbors, check your small group folks. This year our challenge is for you guys to meet outside of your normal time, go grab some coffee with somebody, go to someone's house, go walk through the mall somewhere. It's gonna be about fellowship this week. This week, your small group is supposed to find a way to fellowship. Fellowship, hashtag being the light and tag us to it. Okay, Lighthouse, the thing for this year is grow. No more status quo. Grow bars. No more status quo. We're going to grow. We're going to grow spiritually. We're going to grow financially. We're going to grow physically. Every aspect of our life is going to see growth in 2024. So if you are serious about growth in 2024, this is the time for you. Starting in February, we're going to have a study that is going to teach us all about growth in all aspects of our life. It is interesting. If you want to be a part of it, make sure you get into a small group. Okay, so if you haven't done so already, I'm going to need you to go over to the Google Play Store or the App Store or the Apple App Store and download Church Center. And in there, you'll be able to find Lighthouse Christian Church. That is going to be your church app. And through that app, you'll be able to connect with us all throughout the week. You'll be able to get announcements, uh, connect with your small groups, anything concerning Lighthouse, you'll be able to find there. So go ahead and get that app. Amen. How y'all like them video announcements? Y'all like that? Okay, there are plenty more where that came from. Okay, <laughs> no, we're grateful for uh, how God is doing things in our in our midst. So things are gonna look a little bit different here in 2024. We're trying to get better at everything we do. So um, as God gives us the opportunity to do so, we're gonna put our best foot forward to try and do things more efficiently. Okay, just a quick reminder, if you're a part of Lighthouse or if this is your very first time coming here, there's a few different ways that you can give. You can text to give 84321 and you can give at that capacity. If you have the Church Center app, you can go on your Church Center app and give at that capacity. Or you can go to lighthouse.sj.church, click give and you give at that capacity. Amen? If all hearts and minds are clear, one more thing. Oh, that's right. Um, it directly following service. If you signed up for discipleship, pastor discipleship in particular, we need to meet with you for a few minutes. So please do not run out those doors. We need you to stay just for a little bit. If you signed up for pastor's discipleship class, we want to meet with you for a few, few moments and have some conversation with you. Amen. All right. Now, if all hearts and minds are clear, please stand to your feet and let's receive our benediction. Let's receive our benediction. It'll come out of the book of Jude, verses 24 and 25. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. And the people of God say, amen. Happy New Year, everybody.